Welcome to the latest edition of the Hacha Zim Zim vlog. Um, I don't know exactly how I got on this topic, but um, I've been thinking lately about uh, different websites for different studios and how different studios manage their archive. So you've seen how IMDb curates movies, how Amazon curates movies, how Netflix curates movies, but how do the actual studios curate their own archive? So I decided to take a look at a bunch of different studio websites and um, Paramount, for example, has a really interesting way to uh, organize their archive. Um, they've got this neat little interface that's very reminiscent of Discover's new film app um, that sort of opens up and you see all the different uh, ties and tags for movies. It looks really cool, but I'm not sure it's actually terribly useful as an archive. Then if you look at uh, Universal or you look at Disney, um, both of them really have no sense of their archive at all. They only have really what's recently out, what's about to come out. Um, what's recently available. And uh, for Disney especially, this kind of makes sense because their whole stock and trade is re-releasing their archive every now and then and then making it unavailable. But uh, at the same time, there's really no use of the fact that they have all this information about all these uh, movies that they've made. If you look at Warner's website, it kind of looks like a businessy enterprise solution kind of website. It doesn't really feel like a movie website at all. Um, but as far as the archive goes, they've actually done a pretty good job of organizing it in a fairly sensible way. Although it's kind of unclear if you look at their headings, what's the difference between archive versus home video. But that having been said, um, they've got a really nice made-to-DVD order, uh, made-to-order DVD shop um, that you can just uh, select titles and they'll actually run off a copy for you. That's very well organized. Um, the interface isn't great at all, but uh, more than any of the other uh, websites, they really seem to have a really good sense of what they've got in stock and how to make it available. They'll even let you print up posters from old movies, which I think is fantastic. Um, a lot more studios should be doing stuff like that. Sony, um, again, kind of looks like a business website um, and not a real great sense of archive. The Sony Pictures Classics website looks a little bit better and kind of has a better presentation. Uh, but overall, there's there's less of a sense of archive on Sony's site. DreamWorks website looks really, really cool, but again, I'm not sure that interface is terribly useful, and it takes forever to load. Um, and again, it doesn't go back very far, and I wonder if part of that is they got bought out at some point, so that, I don't know if that means that their archive is not their own anymore, and they can't put it on the website. In any case, it's not very well organized. Um, the DreamWorks Animation website, on the other hand, which is a completely different website, um, is uh, pretty comprehensive. Um, and part of that is there's just not that many titles for them to keep track of. Um, that having been said, it's not very sortable, but again, there's not that many titles to sort, so maybe that's the issue there. Um, interestingly enough, I expected to find a similar situation with Lionsgate and Summit, two smaller studios with less of a back catalog to keep track of, figuring maybe if there's less to keep track of, they might have actually done a better job of it because it's more manageable. But that's not the case. If you look at the Lionsgate website, it's just horrible. And the Summit website, the Summit website has kind of an interesting layout, but you have to go full screen to actually see it, which is kind of annoying. I mean, who does that? So while I understand the need for keeping current, I mean, most of these studio websites are not archive websites. That wasn't what they were designed to be. They're designed to sell. They're designed for the press, but they're not really designed to be an archive. Um, that having been said, I think there's a great content strategy opportunity they're missing out on because who knows more about their content than they do? Um, they're kind of outsourcing their content strategy, if you will, to Amazon and, and Netflix and IMDb and Wikipedia. Um, and again, I can understand the reason for doing that if you want to manage your resources, but if you have the opportunity to control that content and to, you know, put your spin on it and present it in the way that you think is best, and again, having the most information about it in the first place, I, I think it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a worth, worthy investment. Now, a fair counter-argument here is, you know, who cares? Like, who actually looks at these websites in the first place? Who goes there to find out about Warner Brothers back catalog? It's a fair point, although I'd give two counter counterpoints to that. One would be that um, uh, if you look at uh, the selection for, say, Netflix streaming, or for you know what Blockbuster used to have, or for uh, what you know what's going to be on a particular cable um, uh, provider, it's all going to come down to partnerships with studios. So really, the content is going to be based on what the studio decides to offer, what the studio has branded. So really, as an organizing tool, the studio actually becomes a very useful tool. Um, it's a good category, it's a good rubric to use when you're organizing that kind of information. So it actually is kind of useful to know what does Warner Brothers have, what does Universal have, what does Disney have. Um, so in that sense, it makes sense to have a good content strategy and a good organization of your archive on your website. Um, another reason is that we still haven't figured out how we're going to look for content. I mean, that's still not a nut that people have really cracked yet. Everyone's trying to come up with the best user interface for that. No one's really done it yet. So there's no reason really to get out of that game. Um, so I think it really would be a worthy endeavor for studios to really take charge of that and have 
fantastic interfaces and fantastic uh, cataloging of their own archives because that's what you have to sell and there's no reason to not to make that as pretty and as presentable and as accessible as possible. Um, anyway, uh, that's all for now. Have a happy new year and we'll see you next time. Motherfucker! I'm trying to watch The Last Boys, you know?